Hello, my name is Johnny Whitfield. I'm the editor of the Courier Times here in Roxboro, and today I am with Jermaine Wallace, who is a candidate for the city council here in Roxboro. Thank you, Jermaine, for taking the time to visit with us today. Thank you, um, talk to tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us a little bit about your background. So I am 26 years old. I've been a resident of Person County for all my life. Mm -hmm. um, I have two children. I'm currently engaged to be married in the upcoming year. Um, I work as administrative assistant for Stephen L. Lyonsfield Home in Raleigh. Okay. I also own my own business, and it is called Wallace Mortuary Service, where I transport bodies for different funeral homes okay. around the state. Okay, good, good. And uh, so you said you've got two children. Yes. Uh, tell us about them. How old are they? So I have girls. A, I have a six-year-old daughter. Um, she goes. She attends Stories Creek Elementary School, uh -huh. and I have a three-year-old son. He attends Earl Bradshaw Preschool. Okay, well, great. And and you said you're from here, so your parents yes. live in the community too? Yes, okay, well, good, good. So you've got some roots here. Talk to us a little bit about um, some of your community affairs and the community involvement <coughs> in, in Roxborough and Preston County. So in the community, I just participate um, in various different organizations that pop up around the community. I also am a member of Mothers Against Drunk Driving, where I participate in different events with the organization, um, I actually serve as the safety officer for the AME Church, which is the second district in AME Church, and that's the state of North Carolina, Virginia, DC, and Maryland. And okay. with me, which means um, I travel around to different events with the church, make sure they are, you know, everything is safe. Mm -hmm. The events are being monitored and security wise, is, everything is good. Okay, well, good. That's interesting. Um, you were talking about various uh, organizations around here, or efforts that you're involved in around here. What 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 are some of those? So um, I am actually a member of, of course, I, um, a, a community chorus. What? So I participate with a choir that travels around. Oh, okay. We sing to the, during different events. Okay. Um, I've actually been able to, last summer I was with, um, I guess you say Senator Coleman, who used to be president, uh -huh. or was running for right, president, I'm right. sorry. Uh -huh. So, um, it's, it's kind of hard to say. Okay, well that sounds of, interesting though. So you like to sing, that's, that's great. Well, tell us a little bit about why you're running for city council. So, um, I've actually always wanted to be a, a part of politics. Right. I always enjoyed politics when I was in high school. I loved a good debate. Uh -huh. So this upcoming year when I knew it was time to run for city council, I did some praying. I talked to some mentors and friends. They said, you know, hey, you would be good for the job. So um, I decided to run because I noticed that there was a big difference in age. Uh -huh. You know, there's not too many young people besides Will. Davis, who currently serves as city councilman, to um, be a voice for the youth. Right. So there's not too much of a voice for people my age mm -hmm. or younger. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to uh, things that the youth would like to see in the community, right. you really don't get too much of a opinion because you don't have too many youth to right. participate in political things. That's okay. right. You know, politics to young people is just like, hey. It's something new. Right. Okay. That's interesting. So let me ask you, when you think about your own skills and characteristics and personality traits, um, tell us one or two things that you think would make you a good council member. One thing that would really make me a good council member is that I, I love to listen. Mm -hmm. And so if anyone comes to me with a concern, if young, old, black, or white, I want to listen, I will answer my phone and whatever time of night or day it is, I just feel like in order to be a good leader, you have to listen to your people. Right. Because in order to be the person that they want you to be, you have to listen to what they want. And it's either, you know, you're going to work to get what they want or you're not going to work for it. And I want to be the one that works to get what my people want. Right. Okay. Um, and let me ask you sort of the flip side of that question. Um, what do you see as your biggest weakness if you were to be elected as a member of the city council? My biggest weakness would be trying to 
it would be really trying to get things that our youth want and need in our community to keep them off the streets. And why I say this because a lot of the things that they want is always been brought up before, but it always gets pushed under the rug. Mm-hmm. But but how would that be a weakness on your? It part? would be a weakness because I would feel I'm fighting it by myself. Mm-hmm. Because of course, the older generation may say, "Hey, they don't, they don't need this. It's not going to be too much of a help. It's right. we're not going to build the community up the way that we think it will." And so, how do you overcome that? What I really would like is to get a lot more community involved in the city council meeting. Mm-hmm. A lot more youth involved. I would like to have okay. see a lot of youth turn out to city council meetings. You know. During the city council meeting, we have a period called, you know, public comment, mm-hmm. where the youth could come in, state, you know, some concerns are there, sure. they can, you know, argue something that they want that maybe we can help them with. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Um, let me ask you to sort of look a little bit longer range. Um, when you think about Roxboro, uh, what do you see as the city's next big challenge in the next four years? Or so. <clears throat> well, a big challenge that I see now is that we have a really, really big turnover rate with the police department. Mm-hmm. And that seems to be a, a big concern with a lot of citizens, a lot of people that actually are members of the police department. Um, that's an issue that we need to really, really target because if we don't have enough officers, then there comes a problem when it comes to protecting the service. Right. You either have to work somebody extra hard. Or you're gonna have to, you know, ask other sources to help uh-huh. us out in the situation. Sure. So, for example, if we we had a school shoot, if we have six vacancies, that means there's six officers that we won't have to respond to the situation, right. and we're gonna have to count on somebody else to help us out. Uh-huh. So, I want to be able to have our own people, not have to worry about somebody else, right. and try to figure out what can we do to keep officers here in Roxbury. So. Let me ask you, what, what should we do to be able to keep high quality police officers in Roxborough? <clears throat> I, I really believe education, because I, I believe that any officer that gets a promotion or officer uh-huh. that, you know, comes to the police department should always have continuing education. Right. As a firefighter, they always continue their education. They uh-huh. never stop, though. We get hired, and that's it. Right. You know, I believe that any officer that works with the police department should always continue their education uh-huh. to get, I guess, get a better look on things because things change every day. There's a new drug every day. There's a, a new gang that right. organizes every day. So you want to be familiar with those things. You don't want them just to pop up and be like, oh man, I didn't know nothing about. Right. Okay. Um, let me ask you a little bit about the relationship between the city and the county. Times in the past, it's been a good relationship, and at other times, it's been a, a rather strained relationship. And I'd love for you to talk to us about how you would work to make that a strong relationship. <clears throat> and and that's actually one of my concerns. Um, I respect everybody's account commission. I do. Mm-hmm. I talk with them regularly. You know, I get a lot of. Um, I guess you would say I consider them mentors. So I really believe that in, in the long run, in order to, for us to build a relationship, we have to agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. And that's something that we do now. But also we have to agree on some things because the city of Roxburgh is a part of Person County. So I feel like in the long run, if we was to ask the county for money, I feel like we should be have, be able to have a good enough relationship that they say, hey, yes, no problem at all. But, so how do you build that relationship? I mean, I get that everybody well, wants to right, have a good relationship. Honestly, right now, with me never being a part of mm-hmm. anything that they do together, right. it's kind of hard for me to say because mm-hmm. I've never been in a situation where it's you know, the county and the city having right. a conversation. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, let's turn and talk a little bit about economic development. I know you've talked about youth programs and, and things for them to do. Uh, one of the things that we hear from a lot of folks is that they want more jobs or they want better paying jobs. Um, and we hear folks talking about uptown development and redevelopment. Um, 
what do you see as the city's role uh, in, in promoting economic development and marketing the city? <clears throat> well, I truly feel that um, with we have a lot of empty buildings, we have a lot of vacant areas. Right. I feel like we can bring the business in, but we have to attract them. So, which means we have to, you know, put ourselves out there for people to know, hey. We want to bring businesses here. We want mm -hmm. to bring jobs here. We want to bring entertainment, shopping areas here. So, you know, there are several empty buildings that, you know, you look at and you go, hey, they can be turned into a Chick-fil-A. They right. can be turned into a, you know, a, a little shopping mall. Mm -hmm. Small businesses are the stepping stone for a big business. Right. You bring in good small businesses, Big businesses see that and they go, like, "Hey, you know, they're doing very well. You know, maybe we can get in there too and do something even better." Mm -hmm. And so, when you talk about sort of the city putting itself out there, um, how does the city do? How does the city do that? Are we talking about simply advertising? Or are we talking about being active at the state level or something else? How does the city put itself out there? Honestly. That, that's a question that I ask myself. I, I don't know how you go out. You go out and talk with business owners and mm -hmm. see if, you know, maybe they come to Roxborough and right. just, you know, look around, see if they think their business will be able to boom. Mm -hmm. Maybe would it be something they can profit from, from and we also. Right. Okay. Um, wanted to also ask you a little bit about um, how you would like to see the city, um, you know, what would you like to see the city do that it's not already doing um, to promote transparency in, in, its, in its work and activities? Um, it's, it's really about the people, it's about, you know, really bringing the people in. You know, bringing more residents, bringing bringing more businesses. I, you know, I just feel like that's going to be what grows Person County the most is bringing the people in, and bringing the businesses. But but how do, I, I want to get back to the transparency issue and, and you know how does how does the city of Roxborough let people know what it's doing? You know, what kinds of things can it do that it's not already doing? Advertisement would be um, probably the biggest way to get it out, to get mm -hmm. the name out. Because, you know, a lot of the times when you see Person County on TV, it's for something, of course, like any other place you see on the news, it's for mm -hmm. something bad. Right. It's nothing good. So we have to show the people that, you know, here in Roxborough, we do have a lot of good traits. We do have a lot of good things that happen here, like personality, you know, relay for life. We do right. have positive things that happen here. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Well, listen, we appreciate you taking the time for us and, and visiting with us today. Uh, thank you for watching. We hope that you will take time to vote. Election Day is October 10th, and early voting begins on September 21st. Thank you.